feature presentation. We're back, everybody. This is the Untitled Movie Show, a special episode of the Untitled Movie Show, our return episode. And it is Wednesday, um, June 10th, 2015. It's been a while, so I'm fucking up the intro. Um, I'm, of course, Mr. Untitled himself, Mr. Miguel Leon. And you'll notice a different face in the producer chair. Uh, we've got Nick Hor Horacek. No mercy, Nick Horacek. <laughs> Thank sitting you. In, he's sitting in for us for Burhan. Burhan's uh, out filming stuff with Mega Ran, so... I want to promote that, you know, youtube.com slash nerdgenius and whatnot. Um, but we've also got the rest of the cast and crew. We've got Lawn Boys Post himself, Mr. Dave Wade. Hello. It's been a while. It has been a while. I've, I've had to, you know, we've had issues with the Retro Unlim Network and just, you know, life in general for me. I missed so. you. Was it something I did? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I've, I've been working overtime uh, recently because of the summer season starting for most of my colleges. So I've been working a lot of extra hours. Um, well, and, that's good uh, for the, um, the old money. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Definitely. And speaking of working extra hours, uh, a very, very big return for Miss Nina Kasky. It's been a long Hello. while. Hardest Hello. working bird in show business, may I add. <laughs> oh, I wish. I've been at my uh, survival job mostly, but a bit of a couple of projects as well. So all is good. Nice to be back. It's it's actually you know what I'll be honest I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss it I I did miss doing Aww. the show um we are I do want to announce some changes at the end of the show of this of the episode I I, I missed it changes. because it sounds really stupid but it got to a Wednesday night and I was like I should be doing something right now what is it I, like you you <laughs> just missed torturing me for no, about two hours no, on Wednesday night bit, I was just like I got two hours and I didn't even feel like playing games I'm just like these these two hours they're extra hours of my life like they should be doing something more productive with them I get, I get that still to this day, and I'm, I'm in, almost in, into my 30s. I'm in my late 20s, and I still have this feeling like, shouldn't I be doing some type yeah, of don't, 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 don't say that to me. I'm one year away from being 40. Oh, you don't look a day over dead. Thank you. <laughs> this is where you all jump in and just say, Dave, you didn't have an incredibly bad eczema on your face, and you shave. You could pass for 36. Listen, if you wait long enough, you'll regenerate, and you'll look like a handsome man. You know, it, it, Unless it fucks up, and I regenerate as a very old Scottish person. Oh, oh, god damn it. Well, if I'm honest, if I'm honest, Dave, you don't look 39. You don't. So no, you don't. I the do hair really that. helps out. I, I really, was really in the does. post. Plus, <laughs> I, I have the greatest hair on YouTube. Let's not yes. you know, mess around. Yeah. You, if I could say what look you it's have... so versatile, my hair. If so I could say what... say the best thing about myself, and I just said my hair. It's so versatile. <laughs> yeah, if, if I could say what look you have, I would say grizzled Keanu Reeves. Like, yeah, grizzled, definitely. Like, yeah, no, shoveled, hungover Keanu Reeves. Yeah, you look like <laughs> Keanu Reeves who's, like, been through shit. You know, you, you were in this shit. You, you just, you came back but from he's man. been through shit. He looks amazing. The bloke's 50 and he looks younger than me. I mean, oh, I'm yeah. his fucking number one looky likey, and he looks younger than me, and he's fucking ten years older than me. <laughs> Money will do that to you. Money will do You're that. the Keanu Money Reeves who didn't get cast. I so sleep on a bed of $50 bills, and it's how <laughs> I keep my face young. Uh, and speaking of the regeneration thing, uh, we're going to be going a little bit um, off the charts here a little bit. Uh, we're going to be getting into news uh, later on in the show, but there are two things I want to talk about as far as reviews. And I mentioned regeneration because, as I told the, uh, the guys at the start of the show, I just finished Series 1 of Doctor Who. Good man. I just Yay. did, and I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. I... I thought the I thought the first the first series of the revival is awesome. I bearing in mind it's ten years old. Can I just say from an English perspective, based on how cheap our TV shows are, uh, and this is our like pioneering TV show for budget these days, how did the special effects hold up in this for you? It, it well actually, um, I kept it in the back of my mind that the the series you know it aired over the BBC, but over here it aired on Sci Fi, and it was just about what I expected from a Sci Fi Channel TV series. It didn't feel out of place. Nice. You know, the, the special effects, you know, it didn't bug me. Um, to me, it was, it was mostly about the stories, and with the exception of maybe one episode, every episode in the, in the first series really, it was like it was in competition to see what was my favorite episode of that series. It's compelling, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. If it's, it's written like by Stephen Moffat, it's great. That's well, usually uh, a, a, a real thumb. If it's written by Stephen Moffat, they're usually really, really good. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say The Empty Child slash The Doctor Dances is probably my my favorite uh, two oh, parts. The Empty episode. Child is so dark. I'm it is dark, but it's I, I, I've said it before when I sat there, I'm like, Moffat, this is actually a happy ending for a Moffat story. Like, it's dark, he, but... 
he actually yeah. says it, doesn't he? For once, everyone gets a happy ending. Yeah, mm-hmm. everybody lives. That's how it ends. In fact, you know, even the captain lives at the end, which I thought he was going to be like the sacrificial lamb. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. You, you <laughs> you'll, you'll, um, you'll, you'll get a little bit annoyed with the captain. Trust me. Oh, I, I owe Burhan an apology, though, because I... Use him like you wouldn't believe. When I first started this series, he kept telling me, dude, I'm telling you, by the end of the series, you're going to hate Rose Tyler. And I don't hate her yet. But I'm, <laughs> you're getting I, there. It's getting, getting, getting there. there. It's getting yep. there. Yeah. I I mentioned I mentioned my least I mentioned there was one episode in the series that I didn't like, and I don't know if this is a, a, a universal theory for people. Father's Day, the Father's oh, Day episode. Yeah, I, didn't I I couldn't stand that episode because it was all Rose. It was an all Rose episode, and I'm just sitting there like. Just, they should have just called it the Toothy Grin episode. Uh, oh, I actually think that's sexy. I think she really pulls it off. I, I like that Toothy Grin that she has. I don't know why. Just, just the, the, it's, it, it's, a, it's a weird turn on for me, and I don't understand. But I, she's not bad on the eyes. I mean, I, I admit strictly, my fan base uh, for her is strictly looks alone because she is gorgeous. Um, I, there, I is, really- um, there is one thing I like about that show, that episode, though, which is the... Um, uh, they, they touch upon Back to... Well, not necessarily Back to the Future 2, but they touch upon the cause and effect uh, stuff, which is they're in the same place as their previous selves, and the Doctor breaks his own great rule about, sorry, people, spoilers, going back. And then that's when she runs into and meets her dad. But I did like the fact that they were... You know, there was two Doctors and two um, Billies in that scene. I think my biggest problem with Rose is I never felt like... She has a personality. A purpose, really. Like, she just, <laughs> with the exception of the ending for Parting of the Ways, she really did, didn't did do much through the entire series. And, and that ending for Parting of the Ways, before... The pre- oh, she was brilliant in the final season, though. Like you said, the final episode, bad wolf shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll admit, though, she, she... My biggest problem, and I've actually thought about doing an actual video, like a retrospective of Series 1 and maybe putting it up on the, uh, the Untitled Movie Show uh, channel. But that, that's going to be... Now. Yeah, yeah I, go I'm, for I'm, it. Go for it. I'm thinking but about honestly, it. But honestly, honestly, um, um, assistant-wise or partner-wise, just wait until you get Catherine Tate. She mm. is the best one. Is Their it... relationship is the best one. Her and um, David Tennant. I'm Bye looking fun. forward to it. I, I, because he I, calls I, him out on everything. He may exactly. be like a 900 year old fucking doctor, but she's just like, whatever. Seriously, you got that little sonic screwdriver? Why don't you just have this? Just yeah, it's it just, and it's not, it's, and it's not usual feisty woman stuff. She just puts her own spin on it. Frigga Eggerman was my favorite doctor. She's good as well, but uh. I like my, my mainly be because sorry Rory, people out there, I my like mainly be because I found her incredibly hot. But hey, I, I'm uh, speaking of, of feisty women that I'm I find I'm attracted. I find I'm getting attracted to. I've only seen clips of her. I'm looking forward to seeing River Song pop up in the series. Oh, I, oh I love River Song. Oh, I love her. I'm I'm looking forward to her popping up into there because I've seen a few clips of it and I'm because I don't want to spoil it too much, but I'm like. I'm don't, don't, like, don't, don't. Seriously, yeah. don't, 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 don't look forward too much because there's a whole amazing backstory to her that takes place over three seasons, and you really don't want to spoil it because yeah. no, you don't. Yeah, because it will blow. I guarantee you, when you finally find out who she is, it will blow your face clean off. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to it. I'll say, as far as my favorite moment in the first series, the the reveal of the Dalek, that whole scene. Mm. Where it's that she's he's in the shadows and the doctor introduces himself and then the big reveal. Just that whole scene is one one of my favorite moments in the series. That whole episode, really. I know I said Empty Child is my favorite. Uh, Empty Child slash the Do- the doctor dances, but Dalek is probably runner up. That that was a great episode. Well, Eccleston is so like just his presence in that. You know, it is it. Is it ocean? Is it you know like as a as the character not well as an actor he does it anyway? But you know the the fact that he's torn between you know hatred of this thing, but also understanding of its pain. It's such a good episode. That's what I loved about Eccleston is he's he was such a well rounded character. Yeah, he was foppish, but. He he was he willing was dark. to. Yeah. Did, you, did you get? Did you pick up on the whole vibe? Which is fine, humanity. I'll save you, not because I want to, but because I have to. I'm the doctor. Yeah, 
Yeah, you you can tell he was kind of begrudgingly like there were there were times where yeah early on he he just saw us as just like germs basically like lower lower life yeah. forms. I mean yeah, as he and Rose kind of started to develop a relationship, he started to appreciate humans more. But I don't know. It, and like I said, going back to the whole Rose thing, I I hated the fact in Parting of the Ways and spoiler alert, people that the reason Spoilers. her whole impetus for wanting to save the doctor wasn't out of love. She outright says the only reason she's saving it is because she likes the life he, he, she lives with him. And yeah. I'm like, that completely ruined the character for me. Because it was like, you're not doing it because you love the doctor. You're doing it because you like the Because adventure. you're a time junkie. <laughs> yeah. Like, to me, that they, they could have salvaged Rose if they'd have just said that. If she'd have said... I have feelings for the doctor, or even better, the doctor has saved my life. I want to return the favor. But she outright says, I can do a, a better life than this. And that killed her character yeah. for me. Selfish. As, utterly selfish. Yeah, and that's, that's a theme that really carried over, especially in Father's Day, which is why, like I said, Father's Day my, is my least favorite episode in the series. But every other episode, even stuff like the filler episode with Charles Dickens, you know, which... Oh, I, I love I, that episode! It is, but it, it, with the exception of the reference to the Rift in later episodes, it really is a filler episode, but it works. I, I really dug the whole, you know, the whole fact that they tried to tie this in with real, you know, history. Well, I'm not going to give you too many spoilers. Well, I'm not going to give you any spoilers. I'm just going to give you a very loose descriptive term of an episode that's coming up under Tenant, which is definitely a filler episode. That um, they even say in the audio commentary over it in that um, in the box that I have, which is yeah, um, they're all off filming different episodes of Doctor Who, so we only had Tenant and his assistant for like literally one day shooting, and so the whole episode is based around other people and Tenant uh, and um, his assistant only turn up. For literally screen time, not including them on like DVDs in it for about I don't know seven minutes, and it's my favorite episode. The only Blink. thing that the Blink only thing amazing. that bugs me about Tenant, and I picked this up on New Earth, is Eccleston knew how to practice subtlety with his acting. I'm worried that Tenant might not because he he does honestly he does he's yeah he is. So He's good. my see. I, I mean, know Bernhard doesn't McGann. agree, but I think he is a magnificent actor. He can really do subtle when he needs to. Plus, he makes me wish I had really bad eyesight so I could wear glasses just so I could twiddle them like the way he does, and he mm. flips them back onto his face every time he looks at the TARDIS console. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to finishing to uh, continuing on. Uh, you I, know, I, I, I I demand, even if it's not for the Untitled Movie Show, I demand the minute you finish season two in its entirety. I demand a Skype call so we can talk about it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And I I may devote an episode of the Untitled Movie Show to it. I mean, yeah, it's not movie based, but whatever. It's it's Doctor Who. I'm I'm getting back into TV again, which is something I haven't said in such a long time. It's plus, isn't the TARDIS the coolest? in the world ever oh yeah and and it's it's to the point to where i for for the longest time i couldn't remember the acronym but now i remember it now time and relative dimension in space welcome Jesus. to whovians oh, if yeah. you know that you're definitely one of us the it only... was so funny there was um there used to be on buzzcocks it's a you know panel show they canceled buzzcocks. buzzcocks i'm really upset they did i did but anyway there was an episode where david tennant was the host and Catherine tate was one of the it's a, it's a panel show, by the way, Miguel. It's a panel it's, show. It's right? hilarious because she barely remembers what TARDIS stands for. And yeah. she was in it for an entire season. You, you, you have David so Tennant is the host, and you have three people on two teams on either side of them, like your regular panel show. And um, every single one of them was an actor from Doctor Who. It was their Christmas special. It was amazing. It if, was there's really one thing I, if there's one thing I would say the 11th Doctor has over the 9th and the 10th, I do like the, the sonic screwdriver that Matt Smith has over That's the, the one uh, I own, baby. It's I a cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably going to end up getting the Ninth Doctor's Sonic Do you want my spare one? What, what was that? Do you want my spare one? Uh, we'll work something out. Uh, I'll see if the, maybe I can do a trade with you or something. Um, oh, you can have it. Don't worry about trade. Oh, okay, I'll, uh, I'll, if anything, I'll, um, I'll right, give you I'm my... keeping the one in the box. You can have the one that's not in the box. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. And you I, might I, have to put I a new battery it. in it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to be doing When you get it right, all you're going to do is what I did for one whole day, is stand in front of the mirror and just keep pressing the button that makes the claws at the top go. Oh, it, you, it's the 11th one. Okay, um, oh, hold on sorry. to that. Because like I said, I, I really want the ninth one just because, like I said, right now, 
Eccleston's my doctor. You know, it's like. Do you, do you get the toys at Walmart? Because right now we have kind of toys in this country where you can buy every single sonic screwdriver from every single doctor up to date. That actually, I really wish that our our I really wish who was bigger over here, so we had that. Like like the the WalMarts here have like specific areas devoted to specific franchises. Like DC has their I own section. Who was massive in America though? Not not not, 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 not with the not Walmart enough. crowd. Like with the geek oh. crowd, definitely. But I mean, uh, they, they Walmart have, and have fucking amiibos. Yeah, they're they're kind of they're kind of you know they're they're middle America and middle America really hasn't adopted Doctor Who yet. It's it's kind of a geek thing. That's damn you, middle today. America. He saved every one of us. Wait, that's Flash. Sorry. I I will say one thing that kind of um I, I'm looking forward to uh, based on how um the Christmas invasion ends. I really want to get into Torchwood. I want to see what that's about. It's All right, but you make the first sure first two seasons you know, are really really good. Seasons of Doctor Who before you get into Torchwood. Yeah. I am, I am. I'm gonna. Uh, and remember I'll... this when you watch Torchwood. Torchwood was billed as, although the James Masters episode is amazing, um, uh, it was billed as like a adult version of Doctor Who. Yeah, and so it's a lot until darker. the second, yeah, until the second season where it found its way, the first season is very much, we're adult, we're adult, we're just gonna do adult things, and it's like, all right, yeah, but can can we have some story? Oh wait, uh, no, you just do that because you're grown up. Yeah, no, we get we get that you're adult. Yeah, but no, but some of the way. shows are, some of the episodes are brilliant. I wouldn't say it's not, it's not as World good as Doctor Who, but there's some right. absolute gems in there. Plus, Barrowman is. Oh yeah, John Barrowman is brilliant. Awesome. He can carry it easily. He's Scottish, by the way. Do you know that? I don't, didn't know he was from Scotland. No. You know, oh, I have heard that. I have heard that in a. I have heard that in an interview, and he can go into. I heard him switch his accents, which was really bizarre. I he can switch from Amer- American to Scottish. He's so charismatic. I will say this about him. Um, he's so... I say that like I hate him because I don't. I love him. But he's so charismatic as a character. Oh, yeah, he is. It just oozes from him. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys will laugh at what I'm about to say is, but um, am I the only one who desperately wanted to punch Mickey in the face? Oh, oh Christ alive. Welcome to the club. I think there was a petition online to get him dropped <laughs> from it. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but I've never seen a, an on-screen character who I just wanted to just punch in the nose. Like, just, just the most pouty, just infuriating uh, character. Like, when he just... got sucked into that bin, I was really upset when he came back. That's how I felt about Rose. I was just like, just go I away. will say this about Mickey, though. Um, without giving away too many spoilers, when they do the other version of Mickey, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. He's really cool. All right, I'll, I'll give him some credit because I, I know some of my friends have but said... His main, his main Mickey, if I'm my God, I, I wanted to say, hey, Mickey, can you open your legs as wide as possible? Why? Oh, no reason, Mickey, just open your legs as wide as possible. And then I want to plant one in there as hard as I can because it's it, such an annoying twat. But here's the thing is there's nothing there. So, you know, you wouldn't be really doing any damage to it because, my God, if there was... He was he's been friends he was friend zoned to hell during that ser- during series one, man. Like if there was somebody that desperately needed a set of balls, mm-hmm. it was Mickey. But that's that's just me. I'm I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that. You know No, I'm, no, no, no. Like I said, um we're talking when it first came back, uh, in two thousand and five. Cause you gotta remember it's been off the air since nineteen eighty nine, ignoring mm-hmm. the um failed T V American T V movie. Um, which was, in its defense, semi-produced by the BBC. It been off the air since 1989, and it came back, and everyone loved it, and it was brilliant, and its ratings were like 12 million views a week. But immediately a petition popped up online, which is, if you hate Mickey, sign here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Mickey, and then, I don't even mind Rose's mother. I mean, she's kind of just there. Oh, I love her, because she's so quirky, and just kind of, just all over the shop. That's... I find that just kind of... And she's not bad looking. I, I have a thing for the older type, so... Uh, Plus, she's, she's not... in the movie King Ralph. That's her, by the way, when mm. she was younger. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, I'm really... I, I love Series 1. I hope Series 2 really lives up to it. I'm looking forward oh, to... Oh, well, it only gets... I mean, I love Eccleston, I really do, but only gets better from here on in, mate. Trust mm. me. I think I quoted his line when he regenerated. That's one of the greatest moments of ever when he's when he's saying to rose you know you you've been the most fantastic thing ever and you know what so was i boom and i'm just yeah. like that i, I yeah, was like normally that would come off as incredibly arrogant but you're just like no that's just, just, just brilliant it's yeah amazing. it was it was awesome you know I, the um story behind that scene no i, I didn't i don't know uh, he did the, he did the entire first season 
mm-hmm. and it was shot and he he wasn't going to be written out of it or anything like that it was there was going to be no regeneration scene i don't know why i'm waving my hands around because you can't see it but that's how passionate i am about doctor who and um then he told the bbc because it was only a one-year floating contract that he said i don't want to be typecast i don't want to be the doctor anymore and they went oh right oh shit um can you at least come back and do a regeneration scene so that regeneration scene you see at the end of that episode was shot like four months later you can't really tell it it really does look seamless yeah i don't I know what he didn't want to be typecast and then he went and did gi joe well, here's, oh, huh. here's the thing i don't know what eccleston's problem I, i've heard there were issues between him and russell t davies he won't the... come back he won't do any comic cons any reunions any documentaries mm. about Doctor Who. now he just refuses to flat out do them and i don't understand it i mean he wouldn't even come back for the day of the doctor episode because when no. they had the it annoyed me because it would have been fucking amazing. It would sure. have been a nice little bookend, you know, when the eighth, do- when the War Doctor regenerates. You see Christopher Eccleston. That would have been a great little tie-in, you know. And he even had a problem with the fact that um, at the end of that episode, when you see, and it was a sneak peek to the new Doctor at the time, because he had been revealed to the press and hadn't actually made any episodes. When you see all the TARDIS fly around at the end with all the various Doctors, um, they actually put Christopher Eccleston's. Uh, well, I'll put him in it and edit it in such a way from previous stock footage, which, which they did with all the previous doctors, because you know it's a long time ago. And he even had a problem with that, saying like you didn't ask my permission. To which the BBC said, "Well, I'm sorry, it's Doctor Who. You're canon, Doctor Who. We're going to use you. And by the way, um, we own your likeness as Doctor Who. So stop whining." You know that really. That's so sad. Because, if it was uh... anybody else, I would I would hate that person. But like I said, I mean, you never forget your first doctor, so. He's uh, unless Tennant really wins me over, I'm I'm a nice doctor. Oh, trust guy. me, he will. I think he will as well. He oh, uh, just fabulous. Was that a swoon there, Anina? Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Have you seen his face? <laughs> Those cheekbones. You know I have a thing for cheekbones. I mean, come on. Did you see New Earth? I mean, Lady Cassandra <laughs> nearly like you know jumped his bones at that point, which was kind of funny. I thought that was a. That whole gimmick in that episode was kind of close. By the way, half the characters you've seen in this first season will be coming back for at least five more seasons. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to the introductions of the uh, Cybermen and the Master, because I know the Master pops up in this season, and I've heard things about him. Cybermen are absolutely amazing in New Doctor. They were my favorite villain as a kid in old Doctor Who, but they couldn't turn their heads left or right because they were basically bolted into the suits. The new Cybermen, they're like... In my opinion, all right, it's not as well. It is older, but the new Cybermen aren't as old. But their suits, the the, the new suits, are as iconic as Stormtrooper suits. They're just mm. absolutely amazing. Mm. Well, like I said, oh, uh, the, I love the adipose. They're my favorite. I've they're got, just, I got, I've got a cuddly adipose, by the way. Me too. Well, I've got a squidgy one. Oh, I love them. They're, for a villain, I, the most adorable villain you'll ever see is an adipose. Oh, so cute. I'm 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 a Dalek man. I, did, you, I'm... did you pick up on this though, um, Miguel? Which is technically this is a kids' TV show, and yet, it, you know everything else. This is what I love about Doctor Who. Everything else these days, at least in England, is so politically correct. About won't oh, someone please think of the children? But Doctor Who still just goes, yeah, I got death, I got murder. You mm. know, no one's gonna survive. We don't know. Mm. Zero well, fucks. Here's yeah, there's genocide in one episode as well, which is yeah. There's genocide. The slavery. Well, here's, here's oh, the thing Jesus. about that. Here's the thing, and I, and I want to bring this up real quick, and, and a bit of a fuck you to Disney. Disney just <laughs> bought up the uh, the rights here in America to air Doctor Who, not the exclusive oh. rights, but they they have the rights to show episodes, and they've been showing episodes on their Disney channels. They started with the tenth se- with the tenth Doctor. They they're not even going to air Eccleston season. He, it, the, really? the first episode was the Christmas Invasion. Is that because he's quite kind of a little bit? Even though it, you get more horrific horror thing later on but is that because Eccleston is uh, to the untrained eye unfriendly yeah possibly it it could be a situation where they don't want to deal with Eccleston's lawyers or anything like well I guess now that Disney owns it I can't do any more vlogs and shit or talk about no they don't own it they just have they just have the the rights to show it yeah yeah and it's not exclusive so sci-fi is still going to show the episodes when they get it they're just showing back episodes so they're starting from the, the Christmas Invasion and moving forward from there. I guess I shouldn't complain because at least something that I love that I want other people to experience. Get on it, Nick, by the way. You know you want to. Um, <laughs> at, le- at least it's putting it out there. So. Yeah, mm, I, there's going to be 
that's there's going to be a new thing. generation that's going to grow up with David Tennant, and that's we. I got to appreciate that. I'm just kind of annoyed because, like I said, ninth. Invented. Um, there's a they, they update. I don't know how it works for you guys, but they updated um the, the dictionary uh recently in this country. Well, I say recently after David Tennant, so it's about five years ago. Uh, when they input modern slang into the, you know the uh, modern dictionary, mm -hmm. and they um, put in the phrase uh, "geek chic," and it's based upon David Tennant's portrayal of the Doctor, which is you know he's very geekish, he's all this, but he's wearing Converse and he's got a long jacket, and you know. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, do, he's I do. in the dictionary as geek chic. I will give Eccleston credit for one thing. Um, you mentioned the clothing. He actually, I, I looked into that because I know. You know, the doctors are known for very outlandish looks. He's he's one of the few low-key low, low key doctors. He looked like a normal bloke. <laughs> yeah, and he said that that was purposeful because they wanted to give him this big outlandish suit. And he was like, no, I'm just going in with a leather jacket and jeans because I want the performance to be what people remember, not, you know, what I wore. Me, not my foppish clothing. But then they reference it in the episode, don't they, when... um. Billy Piper says to him, it's been a while since he's seen the first season, I'm probably going to watch it this entirety after this podcast. Um, when she goes, he goes, I'm an alien. She goes, but you sound northern. He Every goes, place has oh. a north. He goes, space has a north as well. I love that line. I, I love the way that line, how he, how he um, delivers it. Like I said, I love so much. I love so much about Eccleston. One that of my I... favorite things about him as well, though, in the first episode, um, and the enemies in the first episode are enemies... Um, right back in the 60s you know, the, mm. I forget their name. Plastic what are their name yeah the people who dropped their hands and they got guns inside um, when he, he waves the bomb at Billy at the start of the scene he just goes you know oh one more thing run yeah <laughs> it's like oh, oh my god if you if you dwell upon it and look into it deeper it's like if you forgot to say run to her right then she would have died horrifically <laughs> yeah I, I like the fact that they always bring back old villains old monsters, old villains in Doctor Who, as well as having new ones, but I like the fact, you know, there's always Daleks, there's always... Well. The mm. submarine episode, sorry, I've got to be very careful around the go right now. The submarine episode with uh, Matt Smith, do you remember when they bring back the um, Ice Warrior? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was so good. And people, you can laugh at me, but I'm comfortable with my sexuality, but during that episode, I think I may have had wood. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll, I'll admit to that with some of the John Barrowman scenes because he's just so dreamy. <laughs> and he, yeah, and, and you know, I, I, was, I was keen on to pick up where his, his allegiance lies in that regard, and he's kind of just, you know, any, any which way but loose, you know, we'll say that. Yeah. John Barrowman, to me, I can tell he's good looking, but I don't fancy him because his face is too perfect. I don't it's too try. perfect. Well, no, I he's should fancy him because he's gay, so I'm broke and I can get away with it. He doesn't like you, Nina, because he's gay. I know, I know. I, 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 but do you know what I mean? Someone, someone's this, so perfect looking, you're just yeah, like... Yeah, it's a Hoovian. I can take this on board. It's a Hoovian. I'm a bloke. He might fancy me more than you. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, but, yeah, I, I find him... I look at him and go, oh, that should be attractive, but it's just too polished and too perfect. It's like looking at a Ken doll. You're like, well, yeah, you're the... so perfect. There's no, there's no rough edge. Was was that a screwdriver sound that I just yes, heard? It was. Were you or just trying to fix? Mark. Were you just trying to fix your internet with the sonic screwdriver just to get <laughs> against the computer? I think it was trying to make me shut up. <laughs> Is that the thing? Was that the thing? I gotta get. Do you know, my, my true story, by the way. One day, my, my parents called me, wa waving my sonic screwdriver at the door, even though I knew it wouldn't do anything. And I was just, you know, because it obviously unlocks everything. I was just going, like, what are you doing? And, what is a sonic screwdriver? Well, I always what? pretend when I'm going going to the tube that I force open the doors every time. <laughs> every time I go through magnetic barriers that open automatically for me, I wave my hand and pretend I'm a Jedi. Yeah, I do that that's too, I... Yeah. Everybody does that. <laughs> These aren't the doors you're looking for. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, folks, uh, definitely. If you're not, if you're not big, if you haven't seen any Doctor Who, uh, check out Disney XD. If you're in the states, they're now airing episodes of Doctor Who. It's from. It's starting Half from. Half Daily Motion. If you want to watch the older ones, sorry. Or even do it like I do. I've got Hulu Plus. Uh, one of the big reasons I got it was because of Doctor Who. Well, that and Raw. Um, but yeah, um, I definitely. The hour and I, a half I, abbreviated version that. I demand 
you hang up now, Miguel, and spend the next 24 hours just caning Doctor Who so we can call you back immediately and just have a massive retrospective. I, I, I will definitely look into that. I, I'll i definitely... I'm just so happy some... that you love Doctor Who. Sorry. I, a... I do. I really I really do. And it's I, it was one of those shows to where I knew I knew it was so far into its longevity that I almost felt like if I got Longest into it... running sci-fi show in the world. Yeah, and I, I figured if I if I got into it at this point, I it would just be a lot of homework. But you know what? It's worth it because I'm I'm really digging no, the show. Never said though. Jump on in the um the new the the, the remake not the remake. I hate saying that. Jump, the revival. Uh, yeah, jump on and the revival, and then once you've watched enough of that, it will pique your interest, and then you can go back and watch the old ones that had twenty seven p spent on them per episode. Mm -hmm. Because I shit you not, there was one episode when a monster is basically someone wrapped him in bubble mailer and sprayed it green. I actually saw a, a funny parody of like old Doctor Who. It was uh, Rowan Atkinson as the Doctor. <clears throat> and, oh, and, that's the comic relief special, I believe. It was a I, charity thing. Yeah, I saw that. And, and you know what? I could I could buy Atkinson as as the Doctor, but I saw the special effects and I was sitting there like. You know, at this point in the history, I wonder how off, how far off that those special effects were compared to the real Who, because it was basically like I think it was like a colored like cylinder tube that somebody was just pushing up and down in the middle of the console. Yeah, that was basically wait, wait, the wait, 60s. Wait, wait, you see the bit where people shoot lasers at people, and it looks like someone's taking a computer from 1984 and that pink square that was your flashing cursor and moved it across the screen. That's your laser effect. Mm. But as a kid, I didn't care, and it still scared me. Yeah, exactly. Well, like There's I something said, really comforting about bad graphics, I think. Bad special effects. That's really why I love the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> mm. Well, folks, like I said, uh, check out Disney XD. They're showing episodes of Doctor Who. It's starting from the 10th season, but if you want to get into the 9th season, you know, you can find means online. I suggest starting with the 9th, with the 9th Doctor. Cause, I like do I said, as well, because it's the, it, it's the point of, as you said, the, you know, the reboot, not the reboot, but you know, the refrancise. revival. Yeah. Start with that because otherwise, if you do start with the 10th, then there will actually be holes in the story that you don't get because yeah, you, you will not, kn you will not understand the concept of a living piece of skin with a face on it. Let's just say that. And by the way, Doctor, I just worked this out. Doctor Who's the same age as Yoda. Just yeah. about. And if I can be really nerdy, and I, I just realized this the other day, that Ramirez is older than both of them. Oh, shit, I said Connery God's bollocks. <laughs> All right, but they're, they're, that's one of two big things I want to talk about. Um, and actually, Anina might be able to add on to what I'm about to talk about because she mentioned Ooh. that she had seen this before. I, uh, last week or two weeks ago, finally got a chance to see Mad Max Fury Road. Spoiler alert, it's awesome. It really is an <laughs> Same amazing... Same director, isn't it? Yeah, George Miller, which I, I give the, the producers credit for that. I mean, in an era where so many movies are just kind of used for their, their names. Name the fact value. That they let, the fact that they let George Miller continue on, not just... It's not even... It's a, it's a proper sequel. It's a sequel mm. to the other Mad Max movies. This could have easily been a remake, especially since they recast... Oh, uh, I didn't know. I haven't seen it yet. So he, he's Max in canon yeah. after yeah, the other three movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like several years into the apocalypse. This isn't like Mad Max, um, the first one, where it was just at the beginning of the, the, the issues. No, this is the apocalypse of the apocalypse. I mean, the, the world's basically a barren wasteland at this point. And I, I love this movie. Um, the special, let me talk about the special effects, because the special effects... It was all effects, real cars. I mean, yes. He had the bloke who was in it on Top Gear, and he said it was, it was all practical effects. Yeah, there's very little Which CGI. Which is why it so good. Yeah, and what, what little CGI there is is mostly just, like, scenery stuff to kind of embellish the scenery a, a, a bit. But other than that, yeah, all the cars are real. All the stunt work was real. It's – I give so much credit to George Miller because this could have easily just been, like I said, a movie that was thrown out there, green screened, CGI mess that just would have looked like everything else. But because of the fact that it's real, there's so – and we just lost Dave. There's so much more Shit. tension – to, he oh. does that from time to time. He'll be back. Oh, I know. Um, I know. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, I have opinions, so don't worry. We won't be in utter silence. Oh, well, definitely. Um, but yeah, I, I, the special effects in the movie were so good. Um, I, I like the fact that... And this is something I, I pointed out to my friends when we, when we got out of it. For a movie that is an R, it's a tame R. 
Like it's it's a very it, it's got intense action, but it's never gory, with the exception mm. of maybe a few scene, uh, one scene at the end with the big bad. It mm. never has any. It never goes sexual. Like when you think they're gonna do something sexual, they pull back. You know, mm. they have they they they're they're willing to pull back a little bit. And it's to the point to where you have people saying that the movie is actually a feminist film with the fact that the, the main heroes are this group of, you know, Native American Indian women. You know, that's basically the, the they're the main ones. And, and um, Charlize Theron really, it really has more of a presence in the movie than Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy, mm. you know, really, you know, he does his thing. But for the most part, it's it's her movie. You know, it's she really carries it through most part, and she did a great job. I had my reservations when they first cast her, but no, she. I give her props for for that performance because it was it was really good. You know, I I just what I love about the movie the most is how much imagination was in this movie. You know, just the car designs, mm. the the villains. You know, I, I do like also that they used the original villain from the first from the Road Warrior in this one. The guy that played um, Trader Joe was actually the tow cutter from. I believe it was the Road Warrior or Mad Max. It was the same actor. So I, I did appreciate that Miller went back for that um, callback. But yeah, it's from a production standpoint, it's an amazing movie. And I believe the budget, I think, is somewhere around maybe $140 million. So you're talking about a movie that looks amazing that is actually cheaper than most big budget films. You know, it, it proves the point that when you've got a, a talented director behind it, that you can do amazing things when you've got a good eye. You know, I and mm. and like I said, the, the the car designs were great. The stunt work was great. Tom Hardy was great. Everything about this movie really, like I said, if if this were any other movie, it probably wouldn't get as much press as it is. But it's really starting to pick up steam with people. And I'm so happy about that because I really do think a guy like George Miller really can bring a lot. I'm mm. so mad that Miller he came this close to doing the Justice League movie and then they, they pulled it out from under him. And having seen Mad Max, I I. I, I really would have loved to have seen what he would have done with that. But, Anina, you've seen the movie. What was your thoughts on uh, Fury Road? I was very, very pleasantly uh, surprised because I went to see it thinking I, I'm going to hate this. This seems to happen a lot lately. I sit down in a film world. She I'm, went in with very low gonna... expectations. I literally sat down going, I'm going to hate this. This is going to be a horrible remake. It's going to be uh, That's what I did with the TMNT movie, the new one. Yeah. I'm like, I know this mm. is going to suck. I went with very low mm. expectations, so. And, of yeah, course, I rented that Eddie. off of Xbox One video, mm. so. Mm. So I went in, and, yeah, it was a great action film. I really, really enjoyed it. It was, there was a lot of humor in it. There was emotion and humor in it, both mm -hmm. at the same time, which is really hard to pull off. So it gets, it gets uh, points for that. Love the um, I love the fact, like you said, that Charlie Theron's character was actually a big character. From because if you look at the posters, you're like, oh, she might just be a side character. But it was actually them two, if not her, leading the film. And I love the um, the group of women you mentioned. I love the fact they were not in their twenties. Because I think most Hollywood would go, yeah, this is great, but let's make them all tw in their 20s and naked. Well, they, was, they, you kind of you got know, that with the wives. Um, you you they, got that with the wives, but you're kind of like, okay, that's, that's fine because of what they're meant to be in the film. But I did hate Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Oh my God, she was which so was bad. She? she was the main wife who was, you know, the main wife. Oh, the one, the one pounced. spoiler alert, the one that gets run over? Yes, I was uh. so happy when that happened. I was literally like, yes, I don't have to see. She was irritating me so much that I couldn't enjoy the rest of the film when yeah. she was on. I was like, oh my God, because she cannot act at all. All she does is pout. That's she, it. That was basically what she was there for. She was the, the prize yeah. gem of, you know, Trader Joe. Yes, so. but I still didn't believe her character. I did not believe that... She, she was in the situation she was meant to be. You didn't I just, believe her as just a, an object for sex and baby making? No, I didn't believe that she'd gone through what she said she had gone through. She just stood there. Nothing. All the other ones, I was like, yeah, I believe all the other three. You, but just get, get, get off the screen. I just, yeah, when she stopped being in the film, I was very happy because I thought she was awful. Awful, awful, awful. 
Everything else in the film, I basically loved. I love the random guy who's on top of a truck who plays a guitar. That's uh, the doof warrior. And I, 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 loved... I loved him. I was like, you're pointless, but you're brilliant. He's I, there I just that. to give the, the, the movie a soundtrack, which I, I love. He was, and... <laughs> he was brilliant. He was so brilliantly pointless. I loved him. And he laughed every time you saw him. Yeah. And, and I, he was I... in like half of the film as well. And you know what the funny thing is, and, and like I said, it chalks back up to the production, that is a real working guitar and flamethrower. That wasn't yeah. special effects CGI flames. That yeah. thing can shoot and play at the same time. Mm -hmm. no, Holy definitely God. props for practical That's effects. Because you can tell they're practical effects. And it's... I'm getting sick of CGI, I really am. You have to use... Well, I think you have to use CGI really sparingly. Really sparingly. What were you going to say, Nick? I was going to say, didn't CJ, when that first came out, that got used to death. Mm, like, every yeah. movie had a shoehorn in CGI. And, I mean, you know, the 3DS, when that came out, oh, we all had to have 3D in our system. You know, I, I kind of... What was to that? be fair, though, this movie does have 3D elements to it. I think there was a 3D screening uh, of this. And right. with, I think there's, like, maybe one or two scenes where stuff gets thrown at the screen, but it's worth it. It, it right. really it's it wasn't basically all any cgi that was in there was basically practical it wasn't like shoehorned in like a lot of movies mm. were when that first came out holy crap i mean cgi mm. yeah it can accentuate some it can make something look really damn good but when you overuse it you know it just like other oh, using it for the sake of using it mm. and i think then you stop believing what you're seeing because mm -hmm. I think the brain can tell it's looking at something that's not quite right. Right. I, I really do believe that because when I watch something that's completely CGI and I just sort of start, I just lo lose interest. Mm -hmm. I want to go into a film and I want to be in the world they're in. If I'm not in their world, I'm bored. Yeah, Whereas with and, Mad Max, right. you're in that world, you're in the desert, you're in one of those cars, you believe it. And yeah, like, race. you know, Borderlands. You know, when you're like, I play that and like you believe you believe that world. Mm. Exactly. And if you if you use too much CGI, I believe your brain just goes, oh, it's been animated. Oh, uh. wait, this is you kind of lose interest. But yeah. when you when they're the effects are practical, I mean, a guitar that shoots flames. <laughs> Holy yeah, and crap. I'm so cool. and, and I really have to give this credit to the movie. The cinematography is mm. really good in the sense that. So many movies nowadays have such a faded, murky look to it. No, this movie is big and bright. I mean, the, the, there's a whole scene that's just blue. Like, they, yeah. use, they, they, do, they use, like, a day-for-night shot uh, where they kind of yeah. just turn down the contrast so it looks like night even though it's clearly day, but it works. It's, it's yeah. that whole scene where they're going across the swamp, and, and it's, it's shot pure blue, but it looks really good. You yeah. know, this movie is big and, and bright, and, you know, it's... And uh, Nick, um, you'll appreciate this being a WWE, uh, being a wrestling fan. You know who really turns in a good performance in this movie? Who? Nathan Jones. He's the right hand man of the uh, the big bad no in it. No way! And actually... Nathan Jones is in this. <laughs> well, oh, it's a he, blast from the past. He he is Australian, and this is an Australian franchise, and mm. he he plays ah. the big bad. He plays um, Rictus. You know, the one that basically um, N uh, Nina will know. Oh, the one that pulls yeah, out yeah, the yeah. Uh, the engine at the end. Mm. Yeah, he plays I didn't him. know he was a was a wrestler, but he's like yeah, he was six. Good. He's like seven feet tall in real life. The man's he's fucking huge. Big, so yeah, he wow. was. It was like oh three. He was around. I think he was supposed to team with Undertaker at WrestleMania nineteen. Was it? It would have been twenty, I believe. It was against um Big Show and somebody else. That was else. nineteen. That was the one in 19. Seattle. That was yeah. That was nineteen. Okay. That would end up being that handicap match, which. Okay. I don't know. It, it's one of the more forgettable Taker WrestleMania matches, in all honesty. But well, they did what they had to. But yeah, he he played. He really is fun. Like he's he's really fun in the movie. Every character gets so, to shine in this movie. It's, that's what he's been I, doing, I, huh? Acting. Yeah, he's been in a lot of things. I've seen him pop up here and there. Um, oh, cool. But yeah, he 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 got a big part in this movie, and he really you he, he really does play it well. You know, as a big lumbering right hand man. I think he's like the son yeah. of. Trader Joe, like there's that scene where um, he, uh, when they pick up the um, what's her name's body, and he's like, you know, mm -hmm. he, he announces he's like, I could have had a brother. He would have been yeah. perfect in every way. <laughs> yeah, he was good. He was he was good. I I sometimes when you know people jump into acting, they might not be the best actor, but I believed him. 
Yeah. Completely. I have a feeling the War Boys are going to be like the new cosplay thing for 2015. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to see them coming out with the white skin and the spray paint, especially now that people know how they got that effect. You know how they I got. I know. That was really funny. What was it like? Cake, cake. Spray. Yeah, there's actually like a, there's actually like an icing spray that's chrome. So it, yeah. it was funny. There was actually a, an instance on Amazon where somebody found an ad for that and just started like trolling the comment section <laughs> as War Boys. It was it was hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, this this movie is awesome. It has so much imagination. Mm. It's it really is. Like folks, um, I said this before about Kingsman, which is another great action movie that you know it, it was getting a lot of of a cult following. Definitely support this movie. We need more directors like George Miller getting big roles. Um, Mad Max is a great franchise. Uh, I, I need to go back and watch Road Warrior now, now that I've seen it, because this is my first Mad Max movie, and it, it's a hell of an introduction. So I'm, I'm really looking yeah, forward I wanna to that. Yeah, I want to go back and see the old ones. I've seen them, but it's been a long time since I've seen good old Mad Max. Uh, let mm. me see if I can get Dave back into here before we uh, round out the uh, Mad Max talk, see what he thinks about it. I don't know if he's seen the movie or well, not. I heard a comparison at work that one of the guys at work with said it's like Borderlands, but more action. Oh, definitely. Yeah, def it, def it does have a Borderlands feel to it. I think it's Borderlands without the sort of uh, the wide slow packing. parts of Borderlands you get Mad Max. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say the big a problem... serious Borderlands with yeah, you know, and it's it's a very more fire. the thing about Borderlands is there's this whole big universe created in Borderlands. In here, they don't really hint on the outside world. It's really a mm. self-contained story, and it works mm. to the benefit of the movie because it's the apocalypse. You know, yeah. you wouldn't care what the rest of the world is like. You just care about this one little patch of life that seems right. to still be growing. You really so, feel like oh, you're, oh, you're sorry, I, I in a Conrad desert. Are we still talking about Mad Max. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're actually yeah, just yeah. finishing it up, but I wanted to get your thoughts because I don't know if you've seen Fury Road yet. Um, I have. I, it's, it's on my list of things to do, but as you know, we, me working nights means um, I have no friends around when I'm off work to go and see it with, and I don't like seeing movies by myself. It's a great movie, dude. It really is. It's, like I'm, I'm really more intrigued about it now. You told me that it's actually officially kind of a sequel, it not is a reboot. Good. It is good. I was surprised. I was dragged against my will. And was was I would like to say this, by the way, peeps, if you would like a bargain out there, because I bought this the other day, if you go to Tesco's right now, you can buy the trilogy of the original three Mad Max movies on Blu-ray um, for £10. I'd, I'd say wait, because I guarantee you when Fury Road comes out, they're going to release the essential Mad Max mm -hmm. collection. So it was 10 And do you know what the sad thing is? Because it's my favorite one. Um, when I bought it a couple of weeks ago, I must have watched um, Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior about 26 times in one week. Yeah, that's the one that everybody everybody really goes back to. It's amazing. Ah, the last of the V8 Inceptors, mate, eh? Sorry, that's my really bad Australian accent. <laughs> oh, I do want to bring you know, in the original movie, by the way, uh, not now, but the original cut of the really low-budget original Mad Max, when it was released in the States, and they really didn't think it would be successful, and it was, Mel Gibson was redubbed because... Um, Warner Bros. thought that his Australian accent would be too confusing for Americans. Really? I so it was actually that. Yeah, and, and the thing is, right, if you can actually buy it on VHS now, the original, original release, you can flog it on eBay for shitloads of money because it's Mel Gibson, but it's like, it's like Wayne's World. That's, not, that, that's Wayne's Basement, but that's not Wayne's Basement. It's, it's Mel Gibson with someone else's voice. So, so someone else dubbed over Mel Gibson, not he didn't dump himself over with a... No, a no, no, so what else, even though I'm pretty... Well, no, it's quite young, Mel Gibson. I'm pretty sure he could have done an accent. Um, well, no, he can. We've all seen Braveheart. Um, well, he, he could but, have but No, he was, he was completely redubbed by uh, oh. an American unknown... People still don't know his name. American unknown studio voice actor because Warner Bros. feared that his Australian accent would be too, you know... Oh. Well, how? Piss, how, piss. Warner Bros.? It's still English. And uh, well, well, the most insulting thing I've seen when you, you when you see like a documentary and has someone with an accent with a perfectly clear English, you know, an accent, but you can still understand everything they say, and it's been subtitled. I'm just like, oh fuck off, oh, honestly. Just That's just insulting to whoever's speaking. 
Sorry? You, you know when I play gaming videos and I always say, oh, you know, piss off sugar tits? I've just worked out where I got it from. This is kind of actually a little bit bad, but do you remember when he got done about some years ago for DUI and pulled yeah. over by a police officer that he ran to? said. Jewish. I remember this. And, yeah, and uh, she pulled him out of the car and he basically went, hey there, sugar tits. Oh. I must have buried that deep down in my subconscious and then it oh, reemerged in the gaming video. So Mel oh Gibson, my. you are wrong to do that, but I thank you for the phrase. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Mel Gibson, I, I'll say this. I thought Tom Hardy did a great job as Max. I, I think he really, you know, he didn't say much. He played does he, a very stoic Does he have the car? Does he have the car where he gets to pop the um, belt-driven supercharger? The At engine? the beginning, he does have a car, but then I think they take away his car. Mm. Yeah, they, they do. No, no, Tom Hardy. What, Tom Hardy, everything I've seen him do, he is really good at. He's just a class A actor. He's really good. You can tell a good, uh, you know, coming actor who's in the prime of their, you know, experience and their explosion and popularity when all the newspapers just say, look at this bloke, he thinks he's so good. Oh, his popularity is, you know, going through the roof. What an idiot. Here's your flash in the pan. In other words, what you basically just said, he's a good solid action, uh, you know, actor, and uh, he's got good things coming ahead of him. See, yeah. I don't even see him as a action actor. He's done more drama than action True. roles. True, but you know what I mean. He hit his yeah, bar yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah, I know what you mean. But True I story, wouldn't... right? When we went to Stonehenge with my um, uh, my girlfriend at the time, my Canadian girlfriend at the time, in, in the UK, look at me, I'm multicultural. <laughs> uh, we went to Stonehenge. I really, I don't know if it's right, people from other countries who love Stonehenge. I just remember thinking, it really? You want to see it? It's a two and a half hour drive. <laughs> And we went there, and she was staring at Stonehenge, and I was staring at the bloke's car next to me because he'd imported from Australia uh, a Ford GTO 3 litre, which is the car that the original Mad Max had. It's like, come and see Stonehenge. No, come see this. It's the car from Mad Max. What's wrong with you? Which one of these things is more beautiful? It's the car. And then I didn't realize that the bloke in the car was asleep, and he woke up, turned around and looked at me. I and you're there staring at him. Yeah, I guess he was bored with Stonehenge as well. Looked at me and I just went, I, 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 I'm looking at your car because it's from Mad Max. And then he just gave me a thumbs up and went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I really like the fact that um, it didn't feel out of place to have Tom Hardy in that role. Like, I, And I know it's because of the fact that Gibson is way too old. Like, I could not see... Gibson. And a massive anti-Semitic prick. Yeah, right? it's, you know, Mel Gibson's wonderful little, um... Well, not even that, because... That's, that, honestly, that's been several years removed. I, I think the studio would have probably been, like... His own no, I don't, I think, I think it's still too much of a sore topic. Th yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't cast him, they wouldn't cast him. It's yeah, he hasn't been topic. casted for anything for years. He I was mean. in Expendables 3, he was the villain in that, and I thought he did an amazing job. Well, I yeah, thought... because he was a villain, so he's allowed to be yeah, an anti-Semitic Yeah, so you could cast him as a villain, but... <laughs> mm. Fair enough, fair enough. And plus, you know, given that it's a very female-heavy cast, to have Gibson in that role would just be do you, weird. Do you know um, that he actually has, I know this is not relevant to this, but it is, since we're talking about Mel Gibson, it just fascinates me, um, that, first of all, he's American, he's not Australian. That really annoys me when people say, he's Aussie's greatest actor. I'm sorry, Australia, that you have no good actors apart from Eric Banner. He's yeah. American. He was born in New York. That's he like saying Nicole Australia. Kidman is an Australian actress. Yeah. He went back to um, Australia for four years, then went back to New York. That just makes him an American who was born in New York and then went to Australia for four years and then went back. He's not your greatest actor. He's it American. Means he's got a heritage called, you know, Australian heritage. But he's not the same well, no, nationality. Keep the uh, North America, if you're listening to this, just because I'm a twat and I want to say it. He's <laughs> the sullen is ours. You know yeah, that, right? he's a Brit, yeah. He was a Brit. He was born in Britain. He, he is a Brit. He's not a he lives in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, the I know. I my my well my this is weird. My future father in law Your future knows father? yeah, my future father in law. So my boyfriend's Sorry, dad, I, okay? I just think back to the future when you said that. <laughs> anyway, he knows um Kiefer Sutherland's mum. There you go. Epic. Keeper Sutherland's one of those. Keeps Sutherland's one of those actors that really should be doing big budget movies, but isn't, and I don't know why. He could, yeah, but he openly admitted, and he's the person who pioneered this. Slight tangent, uh, tangent of this. Because he openly admitted it that you know 
he felt part of the fact that he pioneered this. 24, he took a lot of big screen movie actors and they all went to do TV shows. And when they were asked what they did it, it just went, well, you know, getting a million dollars or eight million dollars a movie is great, but you, know, you wouldn't need any more money at this point anyway. So I've just contradicted myself. But he goes, having a regular paycheck in a TV show that comes back year after year after year is kind of mm. reassuring when you have a family. Yeah. No, a lot of actors do that. A lot of actors, when they have a family, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll just be in this. Have you ever seen the bit years? when he says, oh, my God, I just realized yeah. I'm a pilot on YouTube. It's like 30 seconds long. He's standing in the lobby of a hotel in Toronto, and there's a Christmas tree behind him, and someone goes, hey, Kifo. He just goes, oh, my God, I just realized I'm a pirate. <laughs> and then he rugby tackles the Christmas tree. No. It's genius. <laughs> I give him an Oscar for that. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see him. Like, I'm, I'm still bummed out that we never got the 24 movie. Um, oh, back when that show yeah, was... it turned out to be that 12 part episode that wasn't even in real time set in London, didn't it? Because it was supposed to be a real, real movie. It was supposed to be a real movie, and then Tony Scott died because he was the one that was going to direct it. Which, a Tony Scott directed 24 at movie. Yes. He, all of the yes. Like, where, where do I sign, you know? Oh, Did you ever yes, know it's right? If you watch the early episodes of 24 in the first two, three seasons, and it's properly in real time, and when it goes to commercial break and it comes back, the clock takes into account the commercial break. So it, it does, stays. yeah, 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 it really does. But then Which when you get past season three, right, so mm -hmm. you're, I'm going to ruin this for you. Sorry, everyone, I'm going to ruin this for you now. Right, when you get past season three and you start watching the box set, I have them all, right, wait till you get to the last third of the show and clock, for no reason, every episode from that point onwards, loses, and I'm not talking about a commercial break here, loses five minutes. And it's like, what? Well, hang on, you're not in real time anymore, are you? Well, the five minutes shit. he goes to the toilet and has something to eat. No, 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 no. They Jack Bauer does that. not piss, and Jack Bauer's not shit. Jack Bauer does not sweat. <laughs> and Jack Bauer, and Jack Bauer, only if you pay attention in the last four seasons, Jack Bauer only drives Toyotas and Chevrolets. Mm. I think because he never sleeps and never eats. After, after the first season, he's so sleep deprived. It's just a fever dream. <laughs> yeah, he had a dookie on it's, board. It's, it's just so a fever hard. dream. All other seasons were a fever dream because his body would have shut down by now. Yeah, it's. I got I got into. Jack Bauer goes to the Kevin Spacey. Sorry, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Bacon is all of haircuts. Here's just, the thing. I started getting into 24 in the third season, and my biggest problem with series was it. it there was never any point where the series took a breath like every mm. it just yeah. kept had to build more and more i think every end of episode was like a season finale yeah uh, mm. right about where i think one of the episodes ended with them introducing harrier jet and i'm like this is not this is just going to keep going it's not going to stop take a breath and i'm like i love I, it but i would just say what's the first two seasons yeah mm. I'll, I'll definitely end up doing that yeah the I, only I, thing I, I would like to say about 24 that did make me laugh was um mm. <clears throat> the, if you look at the world that 24 set in so much shit, chemical weapons, nuclear bombs, and crap has happened in America. I moved to Europe, to be totally honest, because there's a bit in season five when a nuclear bomb goes off, and they actually explain the fact that they don't have to worry about fallout because the wind's blowing the other way. And you're like, what, really? And then the next episode, they don't even mention it. And I'm just like, well, hang on a minute. If you look at the previous season, a nuke went off in America, you know? Small Island and shit like that, but it's just like you know we can we can chemical weapon people, we can nuke them, but it's all about reset every time we do a new series. It's yeah, like Windows. Uh, Twenty four basically turned into a soap opera for you know the political right. It was basically mm. a soap opera for you know those that are you know say those that you would expect to carry an AR fifteen. Yeah, this, is, gonna, this is why store. we need guns, people. But I'm yeah. not. I'm, I'm, I, actually, I can't say that. I'm not allowed to talk about guns on YouTube anymore. Didn't they so say I, I, it's yeah. basically a deal for? The idea that, yeah, political riot where you can want to carry an AR-15 into the fucking uh, airport. And that's why, that's why, honestly, this revival that they did recently surprises me. Because I'm like, okay, mid-2000s era America, 24, had a place. Post-Obama America, I, I felt yeah. like that show just had no place whatsoever. It's oh, like, no. it's, it's up to time, but it's in great numbers. It, apparently, they're going to continue doing that. They're going to uh, bring it back for another season, or at least one. Too. Didn't they say they were going to do it without um, Jack oh, Bauer this time? Hey. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, folks, Hello. Folks, yeah, Sorry, just, guys. Yeah, Burhan uh, just came in. Michael Burhan, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you you were busy today. Uh, yeah, I, I basically was up Why are you feeling like this morning. Uh, I was up because like, I had to ride all the way from King's Cross and Pancras home. He made an um, effort to come on this show, and I thank him. I take in the you. you don't love him for that. Yeah, basically, I, I 
spent like four o'clock this morning um, up <laughs> and went straight to um, a eight o'clock appointment with Mega Ran from the appointment I managed. Uh, we went from King's Cross to Brighton, you do then that. filmed both stuff in Brighton and went straight from Brighton straight back to uh, the Victoria and then went straight to King's Cross to get mm. to a club known as the Zero. And uh, we filmed the entire concert with himself and uh, uh, basically Felix, uh, the other rapper who's involved in the, in the project. They've got a new album coming out and uh, this Sunday I'm going to be filming a music video for them. So it's a, it's a really, oh, really good thing. And a lot of stuff that they're going to be using is for the Patreon subscribers. So uh, if you're a Patreon subscriber from Duran, then you're going to have some loads of great content coming your way. Hmm. Artist working man in, in cinema uh, currently, uh, Michael Burhan. I'm 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 glad you're back and won't keep you up too long, B. And by the way, Nick, we we do very much thank you. I mean, we we stay on the line because we. I don't know if Burhan's going to queue up uh, Eclat or anything else, so we can finish. Oh no no no! Um, it's best that he continues taping. Sweet. Very <laughs> much appreciate you. Yeah, very much appreciate you uh, coming on on such short notice and uh, helping us record. We love you, mm. Nick. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Yep. And uh, for that, I will give you a quick plug. Folks, if you're big into wrestling, check out Michael Burhan, Nick Horchek, Dave Wade, and Brandon Ligon on Slamcast every Friday night, 8 o'clock-ish, on Connery the Retro God. Oh, Omega. shit, I said Connery God. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, uh, just to let you know, folks, uh, you can listen to my rant about Tough Enough this week and also an argument that I had with Brutal Bob Evans. Hmm. Looking mm. forward to that. Um, but yeah, um, before this, we mentioned um, before before we uh, wrap up 24. our our twenty four talk. Uh, before this, we want to say something that's really really interesting. Um, yeah. Well, at least to me, uh, the longest running sitcom in this country was only Falls and Horses. I'm pretty sure me, Bohan, you know, the only people who've heard this. Um, they shot a one off thirty second sketch for um, charity, you know, call in Joe. I forgot what you guys call them, you know, like what UBS does. No, but they, yeah. yeah, but they do uh, children in need as well, Dave. Yeah. And they also oh, yeah, you know, I was trying right? to explain to North America. And um, they shot it with the um, the, the time, because um, one of them's deceased now. Um, this book I put on my time wall was separated at birth. It's going to trigger. He's sadly deceased now. Um, they um, they shot this skit, and how much I beloved. Only Fools and Horses is in this country, though it's not run for years. Um, the producers of the the, the, the English 24, you know, 12 part were really upset because they wanted to film a scene in a specific London market. And when they got there, bear in mind how much, you know, like money they're going to put into the English economy. They were told, no, you can't have it because we're filming this very second skit charity because it's only Fools and Horses. And I, I'd love to see the look and keep some of this. What do you mean? But we're 24. Yeah, but this is only Fools and Horses. Yeah, apparently he's very um, difficult to work with, isn't he? It's probably why he hasn't done any budget uh, films, because, yeah, that'll, that'll keep you away from producers. If you give Kevin Bain Botox, is it just me, or do you look like he... He can pull out the voice. Yeah. No, oh, they've got different face shapes completely. That's dance! <laughs> All right. Uh, before we move on to the news, I want to get Burhan's quick thoughts on this. Uh, before this, we mentioned uh, Series 1 of Doctor Who, which I mentioned. I talked about it. Love it to death. Um, and we talked about Mad Max Fury Road. Do you want to give your thoughts on both of those real quick before we get into the news? Uh, Mad Max Fury Road and what was that one? Uh, series 1 of Doctor Who, the Eccleston season. Uh, Eccleston season, loved it. It was actually my favourite season. Um, we were talking about that season. Mm. I don't know, I loved them all, to tell you the truth. I felt that his character was developing really well. He was a very kooky doctor. He reminded me a lot of Sylvester McCoy, but kind of mm. more um, to the Game modern standard. Like yeah, and uh, who I met basically in the Amazon London Comic Con. So awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, why are you running for the toilet? <laughs> uh, and the um, in terms of Amex Fury Road, um, I felt that like it's kind of returned to form kind of makes sense it kind of doesn't because a big large gap in between um you know enter the thunderdome and this one um to find out why max kind of went to uh, ended up at the beginning of this movie which i think i will clarify eventually um i think it was very much spot on and it was a great way to do a continuation slash reboot of the franchise it, you had all the right elements that provided us with uh, an amazing movie that had very, even though a, a few people kind of, uh, I would call them feminazis and white knights, <laughs> sit there and say the movie itself is very bad for women. 
it actually had a very strong, prominent female role in there as well. Um, and this, the funny thing is, Max wasn't the main character in this. You no. know, that, you know that's the, that's the big thing. He was kind of like more the uh, I wouldn't say the MacGuffin, but he was kind of the foil to the main character, um, who was played by was it Charlie Theron? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I got it right. Um, so you know, it was very well done very planned out, had a very polarizing story, and kept the audience engaged, especially on the fact that people like flooded to see this movie. It made more than its box office budget pack. They are talking about making a new one, but they don't know how they're going to do that as yet. I they just, don't know if this is a one-off or if there's going to be a continuation. I'm just happy it's George Miller on the map, because I think after this, I'm not a fan of his now. I, I, I really... A lot of it may have been... I know I haven't seen it, but I think a lot of it may have been which is <clears throat> new Mad Max movie, but original director. So people were automatically on board, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, not just that. I think it was more the fact that they, the, the movie had loads of different elements. Like, they cast the right guy to take over from... Um, Gibson. Well, what's this? Gibson. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, they cast the right characters to work with him, and they had the right story fleshed out. So um, the, the way that I see this whole situation, it's a great idea it works really really well so um it had all those elements like but the, the thing i've always said that will let down a movie is either bad script writing a la 50 shades of gray uh bad oh. character acting our 50 shades of gray or, um, <laughs> bad direction bad, bad 50 shades shit of gray. um you know you can make a movie look pretty but if you have one of those three key elements kind of not working it, it ends falls up apart kill it yeah, it, it kills any mystique that the movie has. Makes it very nature, hard to follow. Human, you know, um, accountability and interaction with each other over the top of the agony. Because not just that, it makes it. It just takes away all that. You know, the the thing that engages you. It's like a bad wrestling match for those who like wrestling. You know, where um, a great match can keep you hooked. Where you always have like um, more people in wrestling need to dress like Marty McFly. Saying, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, time spares. I, I didn't know if you got one or not. And no, then, I did. Know, a, a bad match can like totally just take you out of an entire view. The same goes for a great story <laughs> and great writing. If something's re if something doesn't work in a movie, you won't engage. You you can't focus on it. You'll find it very very hard to watch. And I think Mad Max Fury Road had those elements um, in you know, engrossed in this movie because it had as as they pointed out the original creator behind it. So um, the original director behind it was doing it. You had the the. Uh, a likely success with Tom Hardy, who is, you know, very, he's proving himself to be a very well rounded actor and not just a meathead, uh, which is great because, you know, it shows that he can do a lot more and he's really good at storytelling. Uh, in terms of everything else, that's like kind of part of that. Um, I feel it's working really well. I feel that the um, with this, it, it's got to bring uh, a lot more success to the Mad Max franchise and the studio will go back and think, okay, what else can we do here? How you know? How else can we kind of continue that story? So yeah, it's for me. I, I'm enjoying it. And I can't wait to see uh, what they do next. And hopefully, everybody else actually takes you know notes from this. And I'm talking about the fucking idiots who ended up Transformers because I swear, if I have another badly produced Transformer movie, I'm just going to kill someone. You're yeah, I come up and answer yourself. I that franchise Brady. a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just going to have to choke a bitch. A bitch. Yeah, that, that's literally one we're Is doing. Is there a well-produced Transformers movie? I have not seen one. Yeah. There have been well, several movies, unfortunately. Original, that was animated. Yeah, you, you have animated, seen a good one. Animated, yeah, but I'm talking feature by Rexham film. I, I defend the fourth movie. I didn't. I don't think the fourth movie is uh, that bad, but I'd, I'd rather not go into that because it's past her hands bedtime, but I will say one last thing. I do agree with you on the fourth movie, though. I, I do agree with you on that one. I think we could do a defending bad movies on that one, Miguel. We're, that's going to be on the docket. We're going to bring that back um, for another series of episodes, but we'll talk about that when we get to the end. I will say one last thing about Doctor Who Series 1. I do have to owe you an apology, Burhan. It's maybe a little bit too late to tell, but... You might be right on Rose, and I, I mentioned that to the earlier people. Um, to the yeah, the it's she, as I said, she's uh, to me. I never considered Billy Piper an actress, um, and I think Nina kind of clarifies that with me. Mm -hmm. She's just she tries to fake kooky, and it's at first you're like, oh, she's kind of sweet, I want to bang her, and then blink, afterwards, blink, blink, toothy grin. Yeah, and then afterwards it gets on and on. And wait until Tennant comes around. She literally oh. becomes oh, a clone of David Tennant. Oh, she slave. Yeah, I, I basically, I just finished New Earth, uh, which was the uh, the second episode of his, uh, his series. Uh, I'm, I'm actually probably going to watch another episode after this. Um, 
But yeah, I, I don't have a problem with Billy Piper as an actress. I just think Rose Tyler is an irredeemable character. But we, I won't go into that because I already went Shall into I that. Um, you can you can oh, listen no. to yeah you can, can I, listen can to that. Burn your beauty. I hope that you're, even though you're really tired, you're game for this. Uh, can I just piss off all our audience when um, me and Burhan kick acapella? I I do agree though with uh, with you and in all intents and purposes. I just I, the the thing about her character was she was a, a small marginal character that they just decided oh the whole they world picked her as an actress throw... when they pulled it back. Just, yeah. What do kids like? Kids like Billy Piper, you know. Yeah, and then she they like had a to pop star her. or something at the, at the yeah. time. She was. No, she, she was a. Uh, yeah, that was about actually, ten years after she was a pop star. She's actually, actually the drug ex-wife of, of Chris Evans. Yeah, the drug ex-wife of Chris Evans. When a bloke who's twenty years old and you woos you by buying you a fucking two hundred thousand pound Ferrari, you gotta wonder about his motives. And then your honeymoon period consists of you guys buying a big shopping cart of Fosters. Yeah, and really... showing up in every monthly edition of Loaded magazine. Oh, okay. I just had to look into it because when you said Chris Evans, I'm like, she was, she was married to Captain America. Uh, no, 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 We're we're talking, about, yeah, we're talking about the dog of Chris Evans, the old man. Although I'm really excited kids. that we get a one-off episode of TFI this Friday. I have to say so. I really don't. I I really would want to kick him in the junk. I never watched TFI. TFI Friday was. Fucking <laughs> And I put Lassie and my balls to get that high, by the way. <laughs> it's higher than I've ever seen. Uh, I can't really say otherwise, but we're, we're going off topic again. Let's get it back Sorry. on topic. We have three We have three bits of news. We might go just two, but I, I might put it in a third one. And I want to talk about probably the biggest news that came out in our three-week hiatus. And that would be concerning the universe. James Wan is set to direct Aquaman uh, from Warner Brothers Pictures uh, recently um, from SlashFilm.com. Warner Brothers Pictures announced today, as of um, June 3rd, that director James Wan of Furious 7 and The Conjuring will take the helm of the studio's upcoming Aquaman feature home with Jason Momoa of Game of Thrones, starring as the superhero. I'm okay with this. Did I, James Wan so. also do Saw? Yes. First yeah. one. And he's also the gentleman who basically took over the Fast and Furious series. Yeah. No, Annabelle yeah. was actually Annabelle was actually done to the director Annabelle. of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Oh, you lied to me. Next. Yeah, he, he did the um, but he's he was the cinematographer for The Conjuring. He's the cinematographer for most of one's uh horror films, so that's why they got him to do Annabelle. But yeah, his only other by the way, I saw was, is amazing. I think he directed that one. I think it's like, I yeah, I'm I'm quite excited. Yeah, he's a good actor. You know, it could fall into the I love Saw. I love the first Saw. Well, he's done Saw. Saw. He did mm. Death Sentence, uh, which was the Evan Bacon uh, revenge movie. He did The Conjuring. Uh, he did Silence. I love The Conjuring. Sorry, I've um, talked talk about this before, but I love The Conjuring. It's yeah, The Conjuring's a great horror film. I think he did the first and second Insidious. I don't think he's in the third one. And he just recently did Fury 7. So he's done action movies. And he's a great director. He's, he really knows his way around the camera. So did he also um, basically directed the Justin Bieber documentary film thing, Never Say Never. That oh. was actually John M. Chu. He's, he was the director. Thank God. Yeah, he was, um, John M. Chu was the guy that directed um, the sequel to G.I. Joe. Ah, uh, that's the one. Because I was just about to boycott every movie ever made. Oh, God. Yeah, Listen, you every... attach your name to Justin Bieber. Um, yeah. We all got to start somewhere. I mean, Justin Lin, who was taking over the Fast and the Furious franchise before one came around, was doing um, music video. He, he actually done a Justin Bieber music video. I know you're allowed to do <sighs> music video stuff. Just don't do it fucking asymmetrical haircut twat boy. <laughs> Yeah, I think, now Lin, <coughs> I think now Lin is the one that took over um, Star Trek 3. I think he's the director that took over for that. So, but yeah, James Wan directing Aquaman. 
You know what? As far as directors can go tied to DC projects, I have more confidence in him than I do Zack Snyder, especially yeah. having seen the trailer for uh, Batman vs. Superman. So oh, I'm actually looking forward to Aquaman. And Momoa, Momoa's a, a really good character actor. Like, character I saw the development is oh. post shiny Specs. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll admit, a lot of people are shitting on the character designs for the, the, the new DC um, characters in the movies. I actually like the way they have Momoa looking. It's it's very Games of, Game of Thrones at like. Do uh, you know what? Right, this this is a pet peeve going on a slight tangent, which uh, a massive comic book fan. Even I will admit this and say, people, when they like redesign your characters to put them into the real world, throw them bone because spandex in comic books does not work in the real world. You can't even have it that way. It doesn't work like that. You know, physics and shit fights against you. Yeah, so here, here's the perfect bone. here's a perfect comparison. Compare the what Captain America looked in the first Avenger, and then compare what he looked like in the Avengers movie. Oh know? God, he looks, he looked like a fucking Power Rangers. Uh, sorry. Movie. I hated that costume. Yeah, I actually prefer his redesign in um, the, the Captain America: The First Avenger. I get why they did the design they did in the Avengers movie because they wanted the more traditional King Captain America. Shit. That, it, the guy built like a brick shit house, but he had he had padding and shoulder pads stuck down around his arms and shit. And you're like, why would you do that? But yeah, I think it's the right writer for the Aquaman movie. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that more than any other movie because it's Aquaman's one of those characters that doesn't get enough credit. I, I think you get the director behind him. I think, I think a lot of Aquaman's problem is how they portrayed him in a family guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think most people don't give him enough credit. But he's he's definitely a substantial hero and I think this could be kind of the way Isn't he he's still DC's fourth big What the fuck are you doing, Burhan? Are you smoking? I think he, he falls asleep. Hmm? I think that's No I'm uh, awake. Like, I he, he, um, all we hear is yeah, I think we're going to do an elephant in the room for Burhan's nostrils. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I apologize. That's a sleep deprivation, you know. That's probably a sleep deprivation. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go quick, man, but uh, we'll throw it to you. What's your thoughts on this? I don't know what you're going to say after this, but it's interesting to news. I don't even know who it is, but it, it just popped up in the feed on my phone earlier on. And um, they found the person they want to cast as Punisher in the next season of um, Dead Devil. Read about that. I'm I'm upset. It's not Hamid Jane. I still. Oh, I really am too. But I'm I'm just excited that fucking Pasha is going to be in it. I don't I'm... think Thomas Jane will do TV though. Here's the thing. Am I the only one that thinks Thomas Jane looks like a slightly younger Christopher Lambert? Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, you can't unsee it anymore. Once you see, it, you can't unsee it anymore. No, he, he does yeah. like. Yeah, he does like a young. He actually looks a better acted than Christopher oh, Lambert. I can't believe Lambert. I'm about to say this, but I demand a remake of Highlander with him. <laughs> fine with that. I would see him, you know, doing some sword play. I would be totally cool with him him playing the, the Highlander role. Who would you role. cast? Yeah, who would you cast as the sea book who will kill my man? Oh, um, ooh, that's that's rough. I I don't know who. Um, James almost. <laughs> oh, Adana from uh, Battle yeah. Galactica. I don't know. Um, I swing a sword, but I'm fat and like to just jump and hold piss off bitches. Hey, 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 that's that's Admiral Adama. Respect. <laughs> I don't know, but that that's I, I I don't know, you know, the as far as um Well it was on the cards. It was on the cards. That was a remake of Highlander coming out a couple of years ago and then they canned it because the fan base just turned against it. Well, they turned against it because they found out Ryan Reynolds was being cast as uh Connor. I would have actually as, well, 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 Ryan Reynolds was being cast as what? It was gonna be Connor Cloud in the Highland remake. I wouldn't have an issue with that. I wouldn't, I kinda like that. You know in the original Highlander, um Christoph uh, promoted correctly, Christoph Lambert. Sounds like a vintage wine. Um, <laughs> he uh, he learned it. He could speak proper English at the time, and he learned his lines phonetically. So when you look at it now and think it's really disjointed, even though I love it, it was because he couldn't actually speak English. <laughs> Fair play, I say. You did a whole movie and you couldn't speak English. It works. Brilliant. Yeah, I think it worked out just fine. Yeah. So the quickening was just him being a retard. Yeah. The quickening was him thumbing through a manual very quickly to learn English. I just wonder if Thomas Jane could pull off the laugh, the Christopher Lambert. With the <laughs> oh, wait, I've got it. Tom Jane should be the Kurgan. No. Mm, no, you can replace Clancy Brown. I'm sorry. It's, uh, I get Ron Perlman to the Kurgan. I'd be fine with that. No, Ron Perlman should play Ramirez. If he wasn't in the state he was now, we could regenerate him and put some terrible thing like that and could put him back into his earlier body. Um, I need Tim Curry for the Kurgan. 
Uh, I didn't. You know what? I only found out recently about Stroke when they had that whole story about him appearing at Tony Awards. That made me so sad because I didn't know uh, that he had a stroke. And when I saw the picture, I'm like, oh no. Why? Who had a stroke? Tim Curry, Tim Curry. three years ago. Oh, no. I didn't know that. Yeah, he kept, it, he kept a secret, and then he came out recently at the Tony Awards and and uh, got up on stage. He's in a wheelchair right now, and yeah, he he has like full on stroke face. Like yeah. it's, it's like, it's so like sad. I, I, I don't want to sound horrible when I say this. I'm just doing script to her, but it, you know, you get like well, I don't touch, but I don't get one. You know, when you get like some strokes that people recover from, it takes some rehabilitation and you know, uh, like uh, working at the gym and shit. He he's got, and it's really sad because. Guy a legend. He's got full on. Yeah. He's got the thousand yard stare, basically. And it was really, really. I saw it, and it was so sad and just hunting. And and this sounds really cheap, but um, by the way, people, if you go to Western right now, you can buy the remastered Blu-ray version of Rocky Horror Picture Show that has both the English and the American cut on it, and seven hours special features, five pounds. And I just watched that, then I saw this, and. I mean, I think he's an amazing actor anyway, but it was just, it was so saddening, disheartening to see him like that. And like, no, but you're the person that I build up like this in my mind, and you're all supposed to be immortal. And oh, it was so, it was, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Same, Maybe my eyes were welled up a little bit. I had the same feeling with about Dick Clark when I went back and watched some of his old uh, New Year's Rock Eve shows and then comparing them to, you know, post stroke. It's like, the man was just on fire with such charisma and post stroke it was just none of that was left and it's so sad because you know that mind and that attitude yeah, you know in that there person's within that body and it's it really is it really is so sad and i i give him credit for not being in the limelight like unlike dick Clark, who kind of you saw him deteriorate curry is you know standing in the background he's not out mm -hmm. in the limelight and he's kind of letting people just kind of remember him as you know the great actor and not as just a lump of you know brain that he is at this point and i hate to say it like that but he folks if you've not seen the the, the pictures i met the tonys it will it's gonna hurt you it really is i don't think i will i don't think i can poor tim it's, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate um but yeah um as far as like, oh as, my lord you ooh, yeah you saw it he got the thousand yard there you shouldn't have done that. You could never run see it. Remember him as the great actor he was. It reminds me actually of it was Bobby the Bobby Heenan. Oh yeah, when you see pictures of him now with the, the deteriorated jaw, like yeah, I, yeah. I, it's the same thing. Like just you want to remember that as like the icon they were and not you know them after these tragedies. Oh, he shouldn't. There you can't. Yeah, point. Can't go well. I don't remember you because you're you know if you were a superhero. Not everyone's a superhero. Yeah. Um. In the end, you know, he's still who he is. Hopefully he just lives the rest of his life happy and, you know, no issues. Well, does anybody have anything they want to say about uh, Aquaman um, being directed I'm, by Jason? I'm this. Um, I, you know what? I know people pissing and moaning about it on the internet, but I'm quite happy with that choice. That's what I'm saying. I think Aquaman, because he's not immediately injected, I, I don't think he plays that of a role in Batman vs. Superman. This could be a situation where he can really carve his own niche. If it's a mm -hmm. that just happens to take place in there and they plan on bringing him in after the fact, I think this could probably be the strong film out of the DC movies, so I'm actually looking forward to it, depending on what direction they would take it. I'm looking forward more to this than I am Suicide Squad. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Right. So, immediately my brain's thinking, I expect good things. Yeah, and great actor. Great actor. Jason Moa doesn't get enough credit. I mean, a lot of people shit on him for the Conan remake. That wasn't his fault. No, I think the thing is, because <laughs> um, he's because he's not white, he's going to be restricted with the roles he can play. So, if he Someone offers in a Conan film, of course he's going to do it. So I don't think you can do it on him for that. I think he's really good casting for Aquaman. I really like the fact that they've gone for someone with, with a different look instead of a, you know, blonde, about what blonde white head. Uh, what, a white blonde head dude. There we go. That was the right Aryan. order of that. <laughs> right order of that sentence. Dave, hey, have you not seen the actual picture that we're Put out. No, I uh, I'll throw them in. The, I'll throw them in the chat. Um, in the Skype chat, the actual, uh, an actual uh, screen cap of it. He doesn't look too bad in it. it. He's, it looks really believable, and it fits in with that style that they're going for. But on him, because of the fact that he is essentially a warrior, you know, it works for him. That 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 look. But yeah, check it out. It's, it's in the Skype chat right now. Um, he might actually make Aquaman like incredible. He might actually make him incredible. Who are you know, talking about? Oh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think like, you might make him credible because everyone's been laughing at Aquaman for God knows how many years. Okay, it sounds like Burhan's about to pass out. So I'm, I'm going to talk about one last bit of news, and I'm, I think Dave might rage out a bit uh, when I talk about this. Oh so, my uh, God, that's fucking amazing. Oh, you saw, the, you saw the picture? Yeah. Yeah, it looks really good. I, I, I could really see it. good. But yeah, um, Dave, you might want to sit down for this. Um, I'm sad, man. It's going to make me jizz my pants. Uh, I don't know about this, so we'll Probably see. Um, from Cinemaland, Dwayne Johnson will star in the new Big Trouble in Little China remake. Yeah, I'm not watching that piece of shit. I'm with Johnny Malone on this one. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Oh, I'm upset now. I'm not good. I didn't know about it, so I'm not going to rage at that. Because well, you know, would you remake a perfect movie? No, it's the rock called the right to it, because knows it was a cop following, and he's giving himself the starring role. Wait a minute, Fuck he owns, he owns the right to it? Hold on. He owns, he owns the rights to it. Seven Marks Entertainment is producing the movie. It's his production company, and they're shopping it around studios at the moment to get financing from big-time studios to get it produced. Fuck you, Dwight Johnson. Fuck you with a big large hole. Wow, I didn't even know that his. <laughs> wow. uh, I didn't even know that his uh, production studio was producing it. That's... I want yeah. Kurt Russell to roll up a newspaper, walk up to him, slap him on the nose with it like a bad dog. Say no, no. I don't for this. I don't care who's remaking it. I'm just annoyed. There's another remake. Okay, I'm not isn't it? It's successful when it came out. We know that, but it's such. You know, for cult following, it, it's such, you know, a beloved part of people's lives. Why would you? That's like, I've got a really good idea. I'm going to rewrite the Bible, but uh, there's a couple of bits that I don't like, so I'm just going to ad lip them. I'll Oops. just remake the Star Wars films. That's going to happen at some point. Just, it's you just, do realize no, that. No, it's going to happen. In about all, I'm, all I'm saying is, there's no point in them remaking this movie. What, what The Rock did was go, Ew. Let's see, this movie's a cult favourite. Why don't I just, you know, cast myself in the lead role? Why don't I cast myself and turn towards the camera and do that Roger Moore thing with my eyes? Yeah, it is bullshit, and he knows it's bullshit, so as far as I'm concerned, dude has no fucking reason to be doing that. Go sit on the naughty step, you wanker. I, I, I just, ugh, it, it, it really annoyed me, and I've never seen Johnny that this upset. Johnny Malone, Happy Castle Gamer, was livid. I like his pineapple livid. video, sorry. He was livid, totally livid about this, and I don't blame him. Any person who loves Big Trouble in Little China would not want this arrogant prick just basically trying to get himself a starring role in a movie that he does not deserve. Sorry. You know what? Do you remember when we had Callum on, the uh, uh, Burn the Boy? Yeah. I guarantee, right now I know this news, that um, the guys over at Ghastly Tales will have a rant video coming up on this. I absolutely guarantee. It's ridiculous. It does. It does need to happen. And, and as far as I'm concerned, why well, he thinks he's the savior of everything film. He's not. He literally isn't. Ash. And he sat and goes, "Oh, San Andreas made loads of money." No, San Andreas did a mods box for take. It didn't make as much as the rest of other movies. Yeah, and it was. So, it came out during the summertime. Release that in February and see what kind of numbers you'll get. Exactly. exactly. And it had no competition whatsoever. So fuck you. All right, trouble little China. You should not be touching it. You should not be anywhere near it. As far as I'm concerned, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, right? You try to bite off too much more than you could chew. We all remember the two bears. Did you not learn anything from Hercules? Or the game plan. Remember that one? No, uh, Her well, first off, Hercules is not a bad movie. I actually really enjoy the Hercules uh, movie. I would actually say you've not learned anything. Uh, learn from Will Smith and what he went through with After Earth. Like, there's nothing, nothing can come out of a movie when you. Are, not, are the star and the producer. Like, nothing... Yeah, stop believing your fucking hype and fucking get humble. That's yeah, what I'm thinking. I think the only two actors that were able to pull that off properly were um, Gib uh, Gibson and, oh, uh, God, Field of Dreams. What the fuck was his name? Uh, Costner. Costner. Yeah, they're the only uh, two... Clint Eastwood does a pretty good job. What, what the hell? Sorry. I think Clint Eastwood does a good job with starring and directing in his own... Films. No, but that's the thing. At least he uses original concepts. Gran yeah, Torino I agree. Was yeah, I agree. Tune. Yeah, Gran Torino was an original concept. Yeah. Clint Eastwood does a remake of other people's movies, cult favourites, so that he can have a starring role. It's oh, you know how I feel about re uh, remakes. You know, instant dis dislike. Has no one learned from Robocop? I mean, literally has no one learned from Robocop. You said out loud, but now I have to Well, no, they, they learned because that movie made money, so clearly they're on the right track. Yeah. 
Is really, even small... the fact that the fans hated it and everyone shat all over the film. Well, the thing is, people can hate it as much as they want if they still buy a ticket. That's how. Yeah, I mean, Transformers Four made over a billion dollars, and most people consider it the worst of series, even though I disagree. Yeah. I, I disagree with that. I think it's the best of the series. As long as people keep going to see the films, they keep making them. That's the thing. That's, Especially because yeah. they didn't have the guy who just went do it. Yeah. Sorry, Ben, I just have to say on a quick tangent, I'm checking your timeline and I'm looking at your faces and is it physically possible to raise your eyebrow that high? Uh, I have Bell's palsy. It's like you look like Penfold from Danger Mouse. Yeah, one of my uh, one side of my face is actually a lot longer than the other. Okay. So oh, I'm not I've taking never noticed. Just, I'm just saying that it, like your eyebrows are clearly two foot above your head. You look like a cartoon from England in he, the seventies. He's got he's got the Ed eyebrows from Ed, Ed and Eddie. <laughs> boots on the on the forehead. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not looking forward to this. Um, I'll be honest. I, I I'll admit I have not seen the original Big Trouble in Little China. It's just one of a few John Carpenter films I haven't gotten around to watching. But mm-hmm. nothing about this sounds right. Especially having found out now that he's producing it. That to me screams vanity project. And well, even if he bought the right to it, it, as you said, it's a vanity project. If you look about it on paper, it's and don't get me wrong, you know, it's a cult movie now. Um, but you're going to remake a movie that successfully failed on release. Mm-hmm. Twenty million dollar budget made a box office of eleven million. Yeah, and then became you know a cult uh, film. You know. 20 odd years later, that, that, that's a bold decision. Actually, this reminds me of something that's really, really fun I read in the paper today. Um, and not, you know, I don't mean to bring sports, but, you know, Sepp Blatter and all this shit right now. And do you know, there was a movie released about the history of FIFA, and it cost $19 million. And, and it was shit. And in North America, do you know what it took on its first day across all the cinemas or theaters it was in? How much? $363. Well, I mean, that's what you get releasing a FIFA movie outside of the the um, season, or at least championships, in America. You in know, a normal World Cup year, but also because everyone's so fucked with their... Um, hey, Burhan, you're doing Darth Vader again. Um, <laughs> We're finishing up, Burhan. Don't worry about it. Mm. I'll let yeah. you get your sleep. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. You were going to say... Oh, no, I just, I just find it funny because, of, uh, you know, all the corruption shit aside right now, it's just like you spent $19 million dollars on movie and it made three hundred and sixty three dollars in its first day release. Yeah, so it's gonna get fired. That's rough. So yeah, Burhan sounds like he's about to pass out. Uh, I'm a bit tired. I'm sure you guys are up past your bedtime. So um let's round things out. Uh I did want to make a couple of announcements on um <laughs> uh well Nick I know that you're you're st- you're still gonna be up but you know the our our lovely UK um, yeah. hosts are, are way past yeah, bedtime, so. four or five AM yeah so I'm, I'm, uh, I do want to make a... We're machines, and we do this for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I very much appreciate you guys for coming on. I know it's late, um, mm. but I do want to make one quick announcement. Um, I've had a lot of time to think about the show in particular. Uh, I'm continuing to do the show, but I do want to make a couple changes. Obviously, if you're listening to this now, it's being pre-recorded. That's something that I'm probably going to be sticking to and not doing the live show anymore. It's a lot easier for production wise for us to do that. So if you're listening to this... Get used to it because it's going to be the case for now on. Um, another thing we get that to I'm, the Connery gods as well. Yeah, and oh, another another change that I'm going to be making is uh, due to my schedule, especially during the summertime, I'm shifting the show biweekly. Um, we're going to do an episode, then skip a week, and then do another episode just because a summertime's coming up. Um, a lot of the schools that I'm I, I do tech support for are just starting, so I'm going to be busy this summer. And B, I don't want to burn out through a lot of our themes because I'm starting to run out of um, theme episodes to do. As far as themes, um, within the next few weeks, or at least within the next month or two, I want to revisit our Defending Bad Movies series. We're going to be bringing that back. I'll be doing my episode, Dave's episode, Burhan's ep- and Burhan's episode, and you know, your did your episode um, mm-hmm. uh, earlier, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, we're doing an Avengers uh, re- uh, face retrospective, uh, and I'm hoping to get a guest on for that. And I want to do the same thing for Terminator. That's one. I want to do a Terminator retrospective Ooh, yes, uh, in the Revenge. So look out for the guys. So before I throw it over to everybody else and do their plugs. Can I bring a guest on, by the way, who loves uh, movies? For Terminator or for what? You, bring, you can bring him on when you do Defending Bad Movies episode. We'll... I've, got, I've got a friend in the background who watched this and lives this and likes movies. And um, Jake and he, he said, like, can I? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're out.
after that, um, I'll be getting a URL soon for that for our our, um, our YouTube channel because I found a site that sells uh, URLs cheap, so I'm working on that. But you guys got to subscribe, you know, you can get more viewers up. So follow us on Twitter, twittercom slash show. Uh, from there, you can find the link to our official YouTube channel and subscribe to there. This is a new this is a new beginning for the for the show, guys. I, I really want to push forward, and you guys are going to definitely help us out as best you can. So before I, uh, st- before I end the show. And where can we find you? Okay, uh, tomorrow you'll be finding me on the Anime Comics Movies and Games podcast. Uh, I'll be on there basically talking How about. How do you run on no sleep, by the way? Just a question. Uh, well, it's very hard. Um, it's basically doing a new documentary that. Uh, well, uh, I think I'll, I'll just quickly go into it and let you guys know the subtext behind. Uh, what's happened is I've basically gone in uh, hard times. Not gonna lie. Um, and uh, what I've decided to do is of being a hermit in the United Kingdom, I've decided to be a hermit all over Europe. And the great thing about it is I'm shooting a documentary about me like going around to all these different places in Europe in a tent on my lovely bike, I'll be traveling through the South through the American Europe. And um, I'll also be like having rationing in terms of like finances and food and stuff like that. So I can go from place to place to place film videos, film locations, create different content, run for my YouTube channel, be viewed on there, and secondly, uh, to be viewed in a, a big documentary that will be rolling out to the public for free once it goes to film festivals, of course. And the great thing about it as well is um, I'm currently doing a GoFund, but it's kind of different in terms of the GoFundMe uh, pages that you see where people ask you for money. What this one is is people get the chance to hire me, and the great thing is you can actually hire me to do interest for your YouTube channel, to edit videos for you, to create content, and also to basically, um, if you need someone to like use editing skills, camera, etc., etc., and you live in the United Kingdom, I'm there to do it. So all you have to do is basically uh, donate towards that campaign, give me a message, and I'll be straight over to your location, and you know, do whatever you need to do as long as it's legal, of course, because that's the main thing. I'm looking at raising five grand. To see uh, if I can get this documentary all sorted out. I'll be talking a lot more about it tomorrow on Anime Comics, Movies, and Games, uh, including uh, talking a little bit about the Silent Hill uh, pilot and what's been going on in terms of that as well. So check that out. Make sure that you tune in to him or from me. All right, then the hardest working man in the business, Michael Burhan. Dave Wade, where can we find you? First of all, massive thank you, Miguel, because now that I've plugged my cooler and I flipped it around on the other side of my laptop, everything seems to be hunky-dory. Quite like I won't that. even charge you for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me on Long Boys Post 1975, um, your retro games, your vlogs, your stuff like that, then you know, come and check me out. Plus also, I'll be answering that ignorant little twat who called me a vain bastard for daring <laughs> to have a YouTube channel. Uh, in my video, um, now that my computer's cooled, thanks Miguel, hopefully I'll get it up tonight. I uh, talking about my computer, not me. Um, so yeah, you can find me there. You like Retro Games and, 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 and I'll see. Can I just go on a little tangent about this? Which you'll see in my vlog, which is, why am I a vain bastard for fucking having a YouTube channel? It really put a bug up my ass. Um, oh, can I ask the person who, person. the person who called you a vain bastard, did they do it on YouTube? No, there was a cell network who found my channel. A few people at work know my YouTube channel. But I'm very guarded about it. You'll see it in the video. I'm very guarded about it. I'm what, did he approach you and call you a main bastard? Um, well, he found it out from someone in his family who actually watched me. I hate saying this, but religiously, it's a very odd experience when someone comes up to you and says, by the way, my nine-year-old daughter, and he's the older brother, my nine-year-old daughter um, sings your thing tune off by heart. I'm like... I, I don't know what to say about that. And so it trickled down, and then her brother found it, and I don't know if he's like an actual ridden emo kid or something. Sorry, emo kids, but first of all, skinny jeans have no place in society, and they smell a haircuts to shit. Um, ooh, well, so what's the He said, uh, Yo, no, look at you, putting yourself in front of a camera. You're fucking... You're, you're vain. It's called jealousy. Just, just ignore Oh, no, I know that. I, I agree. It, but it, just, it was just kind of like... How is it made? And I talk about in the video, which is the greatest community tool in the world, whether people do it or don't do it. And I have a problem with people who don't do it, which is, why would you not put yourself there? How, how does communication work in the world? You, you know what, Dave? You're so vain. You probably think this YouTube channel was about you. Oh! <laughs> bam! Right uh, in the feels. I wish Brandon was here right now so he could go, boom! <laughs> really? That's awesome. And with that, uh, Dave, is there anything else you need to plug before we... Um it over to Cassie? Um, yes. 
I might be buying a new car. Good for with, you. With, it's no, always a no, good no, feeling. Hang on, hang on, hang on. With my dad, because I'm broke. But me and dad are toying with doing, and I suggested doing, because my dad retired and he's a car buff. Um, we, it sounds stupid now, but I'll start a new channel. Rip. People won't like it. I don't care. Um, we're toying with buying an old banger and restoring it. Hmm. Cool. Filming it. All right, I want so a we'll... mini. He wants a fucking XK120. But I'm like, George, seriously, an XK120? <laughs> if you buy a shit one, have you got 50 grand spare? <laughs> I doubt it. Let's go with the mini, Dad. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Miss Anina, where can we find you? Well, I've got a, my website up, so aninakaski.com. You can find everything that's relevant to me Aninary. there. Aninary? Is that huh? your phrase? Aninary? Aninary? Huh. I'm not sure whether I like that or not, but... No, it, it, yeah. it's just like a phlegmy disease, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, it's a bit, uh, clinical. But I, I appreciate the sentiment. Cascari. I appreciate... Cascari. Yeah, maybe. Cascai! Cascai, I like that one. That's, that's Sorry, what I like. Anyway, you can, you can find everything there. I'm, uh, writing, um, I'm writing at the moment, so I'm writing some sketches. Things will be up on YouTube at some point, because... I know nothing about production. I just know about creating and eventually and writing. Yeah, eventually. Also, you know, this career slash survival job is quite a juggle act. But anyway, you say survival job, me and call it our regular job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and last, but certainly, certainly not least, the hero of tonight's episode, Mr. Nick No Mercy Horacek. Where can we find you? All right, you can find me over on YouTube at the Gaming Pegasus 187. I'm on Instagram, fucking Xbox Live, Wii U, Pegasus 187. I'm on Facebook at Nick Horacek. I'm on Slamcast every Friday night. I'm usually crack jokes or whatever the fuck. Um, I'm going to try and get another YouTube video up on Sunday because I want to bust out the new intro that Burhan made. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's where I'm all over the place, and yeah. I have something I'd say to you really quickly, Nick, watching yep. your recent videos. Dear God, how do you play Mario like that? I get raped on the first screen. Oh, my God. I'm watching, I'm watching you jump around with the fucking cannons on the boats and shit shooting off, and you're just like, you, you, you're talking about wrestling and shit, and you're commentating and stuff like that. I'm just um, thinking, I would have get raped at the actually. first screen. Because my Sorry? computer, I can't run a freaking emulator and play games and talk at the same time without it laying. So I just run it in post. I just record post. <laughs> <gasps> We're peeking behind the curtain, people. Shouldn't yeah. have said that. Shouldn't have said that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. A lot of people do that. Exactly. Because every time I go back to it. Mario 3 now, I try, like, like, Nick can fucking do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> oh, fuck, I just got a grenade in the face. <laughs> Hey, it, it takes time, man. I mean, you know, most people can't, you know, play games and and uh, do the show at the same time. That's why I had to stop doing it. And I just want to say one last thing before we round things out. It's Horacek, everybody. Remember, Horacek. <laughs> Horacek. Why do you know, Nick, have so Nick, many problems pronouncing your name? <laughs> Nick knows that. exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. We've already made the reference to it online. Uh, it's it's kind of why I, I gave him that little nickname, but I, I just wanted to get that out there. So, yeah. for myself, for Nick Horacek, for Dave Wade, for Anita Kasky, <laughs> and for Generalissimo Burhan, this has been the Untitled Movie Show. Take us out, Jay. celebrities were harmed in the filming of this episode. Excuse me, sir. The show's over. Get away, zit face.